Okay. So welcome. I'll close the window so there's no noise. Um, if you have a strap or a, um, a towel, a t-shirt you can use, that could be useful. Today we will work a bit with rotating the elbow in, well, the, the shoulder in weird ways. So it will be useful to have a strap. So if you have anything like a towel or a strap or uh, a belt, then you can get that. Okay, so welcome. So today we are working a bit more with backbend conditioning, opening up the front of the body by contracting the back of the body. So active stretches. We'll be doing a lot of shoulder stretches um, because that could limit your back bends. And uh, we'll be working towards poses like uh, full bow and king dancer, if that's something you'd like to do. Without any further ado, okay. <laughs> we'll start from uh, a tabletop position, hands under the shoulders, knees under the hips. And from there, we'll close our eyes, we'll connect with um, the feeling of the vertebrae in the body, the bones that constitute our spine. Just visualize how all the way down, there's the tailbone tacking under. Then there's the sacrum right on top of the butt crack. And then there's the lumbar part of the spine, which is in a back bend. There's the thoracic spine that's in a forward bend already. And then there's the cervical spine, which is also already in a curve, in a thoracosis, just like a back bend. So we'll start with rounding the whole back. Start with accessing your pelvis. So tilt the tailbone towards the ground and towards your chin. Try to make it very articulate, starting with the pelvis, just the pelvis, tagging under, posterior pelvic tilt. And then feel how the lumbar back, the lumbar spine, the lower back, is also rounding up, which means that from a lower dosis, it's coming more into a neutral position, straightening, lengthening. And then pushing into the hands, start involving the thoracic spine, rounding more through the upper back. And finally, bring your chin in to curve the throat in, a, in an opposite way, in a counter way than what, it, what it's used to. Now from there, again, start accessing the, the spine from the very bottom. And curl the tailbone. Send the tailbone all the way back and then all the way up. Try to limit the movement at the pelvis. The rest of the body is still in a kyphosis position, still rounding. Send the tailbone back and up. Find anterior pelvic tilt with your pelvis. And then find the back bend in the lower back. Pull the lower belly in so that you don't overdo it at the lower back. Lengthen the upper back. So from that position of kyphosis, find a more neutral position, opening up the front of the body. And then you can start pulling back through the hands and pushing forward through the knees. Pull back through the shoulders and start involving the cervical spine. Find a back bend in the cervical spine, reaching the chin up. Take a breath there in the full position, relax your face. As you exhale, pull the knees closer, push the hands back, find your back bend, reach the chin further 
up. And then one more time. We start with curling the tailbone under, just the tailbone. Keep the rest of the body in lower doses, in the back then. Send the tailbone under, pull the lower belly in. And then just round the lower back. Feel how it moves from the sacrum to the lower back. And then start involving the upper back middle and upper back. And then push away through the hands, pull back through the knees, and bring the chin in. So push back through the knees, push forward through the hands, and find an arch in the body in this round position. Widen the shoulder blades, push forward through the hands, push back through the knees. Very well. We'll come back to the last back bend. Tuck the tailbone, untuck the tailbone, pull the lower belly in, lengthen the lower back, back bend the middle back, pull back through the hands, push forward through the knees, pull back through the shoulders, and involve the upper back. Finally, bring the head forward and the chin up. Reach up. Stay here as you exhale, pull back through the hands, push forward through the knees. And then push forward through the hands, push back through the knees, round the whole back, and go back to a child's pose. Relax the muscles of your face, relax your jaw. Very important to activate the deep core muscles in all of the back bends so that you protect your lower back. So we'll straight away come all the way around. I'll lie on the side so you can see me. We want to find this modification of the bridge pose, but we actually do it in order to activate the glutes. So we want to take the feet further away, not uh, in a normal bridge position. So take the feet two palms away from the sit bones. Your, thumb, your fingers cannot touch your heels. And from here, bring up your toes and spread the toes wide. So press down with the heels, press down with the balls of the feet, and just lift the toes and spread the toes. You want to keep that action happening throughout this exercise. So keep the feet pressing down, big toe mounts, pinky toe mounts, and heels. Lift the toes, spread the toes. From here, we'll find that posterior pelvic tilt on which we worked before with the uh, cat position. So pick up your pubis and send it towards your chin. Keep pressing the feet down with the toes lifted and spread, and start lifting the lower back. Feel how your glutes are engaging. So already you can use your hands to Feel yourself. Feel that it's working there. And then start lifting the lower back and the middle back. You keep the upper back on the ground. It's not a bridge position. From here, you want to really, 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 really squeeze the glutes. We take three breaths here. The upper back is on the ground. And from the ribcage all the way to the knees, we're more or less in a straight line. Press the feet down, press the heels down strongly, spread the toes wide, squeeze the glutes. Now from here, we'll lower just the middle back and the lower back. We'll keep the glutes lifted. So glutes are off the ground, but lower back touches the ground. Keep the posterior pelvic tilt. Think of the pubis moving up and towards your chin. Keep pressing the heels down, the balls of the feet down. Keep the toes lifted and spread. Two more breaths here. Make sure that the face is relaxed. We're focusing on the glutes working. One more breath. And we're going back up. Press down into the feet and lift just the lower back and the middle back. Just that. Keep the glutes very active. Keep squeezing the glutes. Three breaths here. Press the heels down very actively, send the knees away, keep the glutes active, 
and keep the core slightly engaged. Focus on the glutes working, but the core is not abandoning. You have that idea, that feeling of the lower belly pulling in and reaching towards the chest. We'll work more on that in just a second. Keeping the glutes engaged, start lowering your middle back and your lower back very slowly with a lot of awareness of what's happening with every vertebra coming down. Keep your glutes off the ground first. Keep pressing down into the feet. Squeeze the glutes just a bit more. And then lower down. Try to keep the engagement. Keep the engagement of the glutes as they touch the ground. Keep the engagement so you can place your hands there and see that they're active. Then try to relax. Well, then relax, don't try, relax. And then engage again without lifting anything. Relax and engage. Relax and engage. Relax and engage. Three more. Engage. Engage. And engage, hold it, hold it, hold it. See if you can hold the engagement without pressing the feet down. See if you're losing it if you, if you keep the feet and, um, relaxed. So toes down, see if you can still engage. Relax, see if you can still engage with the feet. Relax, Good. and engage and relax. Maybe it takes some time, maybe you already got this. In any case, glute engagement is something I'll be asking you to do in the next exercises. Good, bring your knees to your uh, chest, heels to your glutes, pull the belly in, and we'll just do um, some uh, um, eagle abdominals. So bring your right leg on top, you can cross the ankles or not bother. Then from there, pull the belly in, Bring your hands behind the head, interlace, elbows in, pull the lower belly in and bring the chest up. Now from here, what's happening is that you're really sucking the lower belly down as you're lifting the glutes up. And then you're relaxing the glutes down. So it's a lot of glute engagement again and sucking the lower belly and then relaxing. Elbows will come towards the thighs, lower belly will come down, and the glutes will lift, but it's a very small lift. You might not even see it, but you should feel it. Good, keep the shoulder blades off the ground. Inhale here. And exhale, squeeze the legs together, pick up the hips, pull the lower belly down, 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 and then inhale, relax. Keep the shoulder blades off the ground. And exhale, pick up the tailbone, pull the lower belly down. Elbows in, keep the lower belly sucked down. And inhale, relax. Three more. And exhale, pick up everything, squeeze in everything. Pick up the tailbone, pull the lower belly in and towards the chest. Inhale, relax. Two more. And exhale, squeeze everything in and up. Pull the lower belly in and towards the chest. Pull the lower belly down and come down. Last one. Keep everything up and then tilt the tailbone up. Pull the lower belly in. Reach up to the chest. Suck the lower belly down. Lower belly down. Lower belly down. And then inhale. Relax and let go. Bring your feet down. Open up the knees to the sides. If it's too much, then just bring the knees together. Feet apart. Otherwise, knees to the side. Hands to the floating ribs. Notice the natural movement of the ribcage as it spreads out, flares out with every inhale, as it comes back in with every exhale. Then engage the glutes. See if you can squeeze your glutes from wherever you are. Squeeze them hard. See if you can pick up the pelvic floor. Pull the lower belly in, which is what we were doing with the previous exercise. And exhale, pull the ribs in. Keep the ribs in as you inhale. So hold the ribcage in, inhale. And exhale. So what you want is to feel that the back bottom ribs are lifting towards the chest. Inhale. 
and exhale. Squeeze the glutes, pull the lower belly. One more. Inhale with the ribs in. And exhale, relax. Left leg on top, other side, you go abdominals. Pick up the head, pick up the shoulder blades, elbows in, pull the lower belly in, inhale here, keep the shoulder blades on the ground throughout, and exhale. Pick up the tailbone, suck lower belly in, elbows towards the thighs, knees together, knees up. Inhale, come back to center, just bringing the tailbone down. And exhale, posterior pelvic tilt, pull the lower belly in, bring the elbows up, pull the belly down. Inhale back to center, just three more, you can do it. And exhale, squeeze knees together, lift them up, lift up through the tailbone, suck lower belly in, elbows forward. And then inhale back to center, just two more, stay with it, squeeze everything in and lift it up, pull lower belly in and towards the chest, elbows towards the thighs, squeeze lower belly down, inhale, come back, last one, make it the best one, squeeze everything in, lift up, pull lower belly in, lift towards the chest and bring elbows in, keep the lower belly pulling down, and then inhale, relax, good, one more time. Find the position that you had before. Work with the rib cage. Now, you can first place your thumb at the lower belly, so below the belly button, not at the belly button, below, somewhere in between the belly button and your pubic bone. Press it all the way down as you relax. And then use the deep core muscles there to press the thumb out of the way. It's the same feeling as when you're trying to hold your pee. So push down with the thumb first, relaxing everything. And then imagine that you're holding your key uh, and push it up. That's the action with the lower belly. Hold that, hold the glutes engaged. Bring the arms to the ribcage. Inhale with those engagements happening. Exhale with those engagements happening. Remember, squeezing the glutes, lifting up to the pelvic floor by thinking of pressing the thumb away. Keeping the ribcage in and towards the chest. Two more. Relax your face, keep the rest of the engagements happening. One more, make sure that the ribcage just peaks up, it doesn't open to the sides. Good job. It slowly come back to tabletop position. Good job. So now we'll bring one arm up and the opposite leg up. Press down into the knuckles, widen the shoulder blades, and pull the lower belly in. From here, we'll bring the right leg forward, the right arm forward, and the left leg back. You want to stay with the hips square. So think of the hips just looking um, at the same direction throughout. That doesn't really make sense. Think of the pelvis looking down the whole time. So pelvis looking down, press the left hand down, the right knee down, reach the right arm forward, the left leg back. Don't move the pelvis, just use the strength of the leg to bring the leg back. And exhale, the hand down, the knee down. Other side. Reach the right leg back, left arm up, keep the toes facing down, and exhale down. Two more times. Right arm, left leg, keep the belly in. Flex or point the left foot. Just make a decision and then bring the hand and the knee down. Left hand and right knee, pull the belly in, reach away through the arm, through the leg, and then come down. Okay, last one where we find all the engagement. Engage the glutes, pull the lower belly in, pick up the ribs, and press the left hand down, the right knee down. Inhale the right arm and the left leg up, reach away, keeping the engagement. Exhale down, keeping the engagement, and then left arm, right knee, inhale. And exhale. Good. Thoracic rotations. Bring your right hand under the head, or under the sternum, more or less. So, uh, same line as the shoulders, but in the center. Press the knees down and tuck the toes under. That way, you uh, secure that the glutes stay where they are. There should be no funny business with the hips. So the hips stay over the knees. Pull the lower belly in. No matter what you see me doing with the hips, it's wrong. 
keep the hips where they are. Bring your left hand behind the head, and then from there, pull the shoulder blades down the back, pull the belly, keep the hips where they are, and exhale, open up to the left, pull the right shoulder towards the left, left shoulder towards the right, and exhale, come back to center. Good, inhale here, and exhale, twist, pull the lower belly in, open up the thoracic back, and exhale, come down, three more. Exhale up. Push as you inhale. And exhale down. Inhale back. Exhale up. Push with the shoulders. Open up the chest. Exhale down. Let's do two more. Press the knees down. Keep the hips square. Come up as you exhale. Stay here as you inhale, open up a bit more, and exhale down. Last one, be very specific with it. Press with the hand down, press with the knees, and exhale, come up. Push the shoulders to open up the chest, pull the shoulder blades down, and exhale, come down, other side. Just bring the hand where the other hand was, pull the shoulder blades down, press down with the knuckles of the left hand. Tuck the toes, press the knees down, the feet down, keep the hips where they are. Engage the glutes, pull the lower belly in, ribs in. It's a lot of work. Hand behind the head, and then open up. And exhale down. Inhale, push down, exhale up. Pull the shoulder blades down, inhale, open up. And exhale down, three more. Stay there as you inhale, engage the whole body. And exhale, push up. Pull the shoulder blades down, stay as you inhale, and exhale down. Let's do two more. Press the knuckles down. Exhale, come up. Pull the shoulder blades down, inhale, and exhale down. Whole body engaged, last one. And exhale up. Pull the shoulder blades down, open up the chest to the thoracic spine, keep the hips where they are, and exhale down. Hands down, child's pose. I'm sweating a lot. It is hot in Barcelona, but it's also because you have to really engage the whole body. So hopefully you're also feeling this. Good. Anahatasana. We'll do a quite active Anahatasana pose. It will be comprised of two parts. Uh, the one will be more Theoretically passive, but it will still be active, and the other one will be really active. <laughs> so you'll feel it. Keep the knees under the hips, pull the belly in. Now untuck the toes, no need to tuck the toes up. Walk the hands forward, palms on the ground. Allow your chest to come down, keep your hips square over the knees, and widen the shoulder blades and elevate the scapula. When I elevate the scapula, my chest goes further to the back because I'm really reaching away through the shoulders. Elevation of the scapula is just the idea that I'm lifting up the shoulder blades. So lift up through the shoulder blades. Once my palms are on the ground and I'm locked there, it's a closed chain position. It means that if I lift up, it looks like this. It looks like I'm going back because I'm really stretching the shoulders. So remember, I want to widen the shoulder blades and then lift them up, elevate. Okay, so first variation, you place the forehead on the ground, but it's not a resting pose. I keep widening and pushing. Widening the shoulders and pushing. Make sure that the knees are under the hips, so don't allow the hips to go too far back or too far forward. Just keep them over the knees. Forehead on the ground, widen the shoulder blades, and elevate the scapula, which means that I'm just stretching through the shoulders, reaching the chest back. Second variation is to bring the chin on the ground. Third variation is to bring the chest on the ground. We're working towards it. Remember, we're stretching away through the shoulders. Widen the shoulder blades and elevate the scapula. Now the second part, the very active part, 
is where you suck the lower belly in, pick up the ribs, and then round the back. So you find a hollow body position, rounding through the back. You place the fingertips on the ground and you stretch the arms to round through your back. Now here, it's a lot of work on the shoulders again. Widen the shoulder blades and elevate the scapula. Relax the head and breathe. Four, three. Keep rounding your back. Four, two, I'll just turn around so you can see the other side, two. And one. From here, we place the palms down, we pull the belly in, and again, we go back to forehead, chin, or chest to the ground. I'm sliding, but you get the idea. You want to press the palms down and push away to elevate the scapula. So widen and elevate. And breathe. Four, three. Stay active, glutes active, lower belly in, breathe in and forward. Four, two. And one. Fingertips on the ground, pull the lower belly in, ribs in, and reach the ribs forward to round the back. Widen the shoulder blades, elevate the scapula. Feel the shoulders working. Four, three. Two. And one last one on the fingertips. Keep the fingertips on the ground. Just bring the forehead, the chin, or the chest to the ground. And breathe. Four, three. Keep widening the shoulder blades, reaching forward to the wrists. Pull the lower belly in, wrist in. Widen the shoulder blades, elevate the scapula. Pull the belly in, wrist in. And push round the back, whole body. Four, three. Your shoulders should be talking to you. Four, two. And one. Now from here, keep the rounded back and start walking back with the fingertips. Walk back, walk back, and come to a child's pose. Child's pose, you can bring your arms by your sides just to relax completely. The arms, the shoulders. Okay, we're coming to um, the Bhavukasana, cow space pose. Pull the belly in and pick up your chest. Now from here, you want to bring the left foot to the right side of your glutes and the right foot to the left side of your glutes. Now this is a quite intense hip stretch. So if you don't have that open hips, it's fine. We're not really working with hips today. Just want to show the full pose. But it's fine to keep the legs further away. Just think of flexing the feet to protect the knees, sending the pubis back. Now the pose um, focuses on the shoulders today. So send your pubis back, pull the belly in and up, ribs in and up. Keep the engagement and bring the arms up. Elevate the scapula. Remember what we were saying with uh, shoulders the previous time. So the right arm will stay up. So we want to widen the shoulder blades and elevate the scapula. What we were doing before in our stretch, in our Amakapasana. Then the left arm will come down. We will internally rotate and pull the shoulder back. So right arm in. External rotation, external rotation, and up, elevating, but keep the shoulder blade widening and elevating, and then the left arm internally rotating and pulling back. You bend the elbows, and maybe you grab the fingers, maybe you just grab your t shirt. Relax your head, but keep thinking of internal rotation of the left shoulder and being pulled back, external rotation of the right shoulder and being. Cool down. Keep reaching our way through the elbows. Inhale here. You can stay or exhale and fold. Four, five. Four. Keep the pubis reaching back and the elbows away. Stretch the shoulders. Four, three. Keep widening the right shoulder blade and keep pulling the left shoulder back. Or to keeping it in internal rotation. Don't open up the shoulder. The left one. Four, one. 
pull the belly in and come up and reach our way through that. So if you don't see it, I'll just explain cow's face. This is the mouth of the cow and this is one of the ears and this is the other ear. I believe this is how I see it. So this is the cow and this is one ear and cows often have one ear down and the other up, at least in cartoons. So this is how it is. Pull the belly in, reach the arms away, reach away. And then from there, reach the arms to the side, internally and externally rotate. Internally and externally. Try to do it through the humerus bone. So keep the shoulder blades down. I'm not lifting the shoulder blades. So keep the shoulder blades down and just with the arms internally and externally rotate. Keep the belly in. And then we'll do the other side. So come back or do a different transition. You can come to headstand and switch the legs. If you don't want to do all that, then switch legs and come down. Remember, if your hips are not cooperating today, then stay grounded through the hips and keep the legs higher up. Flex the feet, pull the belly in, pick up the chest. This is perfect. Okay, so we're focusing with the arms. If you can, stack the knees, one on top of the other, send the pubis back, pick up the chest. I have open hips and thin legs, so my anatomy helps me. Doesn't matter. Some people never get here, so it's fine. Okay, so reach the arms up, reach up, and then externally rotate and elevate. So if you see, there's no gap between my head and my arms, but it's because I'm really elevating. It's not because I'm bringing the shoulders in. This is not what's happening. This will hurt me. I want to widen and reach up. Then bring the right arm down, reach up to the left, internal rotation of the right arm, and go around and find your position. Again, wrap the fingers. If you want to use your strap or your towel already, you can hold on to that, but normally you can just hold on to your t-shirt. Now remember, external rotation of the left and elevation, internal rotation of the right and depression. But we're keeping the chest proud, so I'm not tilting. Pull the lower belly, pick up the ribcage and reach away through the elbows, relax the head. You can stay here or exhale for four, three breaths. Pull the belly in and inhale and come up. Reach away through the elbows and then release. Reach away through the arms and then arms to the sides, internal and external rotation of the shoulder, not the shoulder blades. Shoulder blades are depressed, shoulder blades are down. Relax the head and release the arms. Good. Release the legs. Okay, you can bring the feet together in a, a butterfly pose and pick up the chest here. Pull the tiny internal rotation of the arms, pull the chest forward, chin up, and breathe here for three. Just focus on the actions of the body. If butterfly is not happening, just cross the legs. Send the pubis back, pull a little lower belly in, breathe in, pick up the ribcage, pick up the chest. Keep internal rotation of the arms, pull the elbows, uh, the shoulders back. You can reach the elbows back to help with that. Keep the chin up, head up, pull the shoulders back, pull the shoulder blades down, and reach the head up, and then exhale, release. Bring your knees in. Okay, come to the ground. Cobra pose. We'll open up the feet a uh, mat distance apart for today's cobra. Open up the feet, press the feet down and activate the glutes. Pull the lower belly in, pull the ribs in and reach the rib cage forward. If you want to, you can come to a modified sphinx, bring the forearms down, just for you to pull the lower belly forward, the ribs forward, and then to come down. So I'm using that grip 
of the mat to pull my whole body forward, fixating the pubis on the ground and pulling everything above that forward. Good, you want to keep that length. Press the feet down to activate the glutes. Bring your hands under the shoulders, the elbows in, reach the shoulders up and back. Remember, the arms are under the shoulders, so it's internal rotation of the arms. I'm not trying to open up the shoulders. I keep them in internal rotation. So this is internal rotation. My arms are facing towards the ground, towards the body, and towards the ceiling. That's the rotation. That's internal rotation. Keep that with the hands down. In other words, don't think of opening the shoulders. Shoulders are facing one another. Pull the belly in and then reach the shoulders up. Reach the chin forward. Press the feet down, hands under the shoulders, and reach. So keep the belly in, pull the shoulders back, inhale, come up, and exhale, come down. We'll do four more every time we go deeper. Press the feet down, press the uh, hip joints down, pull the belly in and forward, and inhale and come up, 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 pull the shoulders back, and exhale, come down. Three more, keeping the lower belly in, inhale, forward, and up. Keep the shoulders lifting up, pull back through the hands, and exhale down. Two more. Now focus on the shoulder blade action. Inhale, chin forward and up. Pull the shoulder blades together, down, together, and forward, and then come down. Okay, last one. Chin forward and up, elbows back, shoulders back, shoulder blades together, inner shoulder blades, press forward, lower inner shoulder blades, press forward, we got the chin, the head, and exhale, come down. Um, broken wing pose. I don't know if that's what it's called, but I think it's what it's called, but that's what we call it. So we bring the right arm out, just like a wing, and then we'll come onto the right shoulder so that we break the wing. Pull the shoulder blades down the back, relax the head. You can stay here, and then if you want more, you can place the left foot on the ground, bending the left knee. And then if you want more, you can place the right foot on the ground left to, next to the left knee, and shift all your weight to the right. Take it easy. Pull the shoulder blades down the back and keep shifting your weight towards the right hand. If you want more, bring your left uh, shin on top of the right thigh and pull your weight even more to the right, opening up. Pull the belly in, pull the shoulder blades down. If you want more, bring the left arm up and over, and clasp the hands together, open up. Pull the shoulder blades down, you can release the head or keep it at a straight line. Pull the shoulder blades down, keep internal rotation of the arms as you're shifting all the weight, open up. Four, three. Keep breathing into the right shoulder, four, two. And one. Pull the belly in. We're coming out of the pose very, very slowly. Very, very slowly. Imagine how slowly you can go and go slower. We're staying with the right side. We'll bend the right elbow. We'll keep the right elbow at the same height as the shoulder and we'll have the right elbow at 90 degrees, palm, right palm on the ground. Pull the shoulder blades down the ground, find internal rotation. So internal rotation means that the head of my shoulder wants to kiss the ground. This is external, taking the shoulder away. I want to take the shoulder, the head to the ground. Pull the shoulder blades down the back, and again, shift the weight to the right. Now you will not be able to go too far. Just breathe with it. Four, three, two, and one. Now see if you can go deeper. Maybe nothing will happen. Maybe you can bring the left foot on the ground. Maybe you can bring the right foot on the ground too. Maybe you can do crazy things. But stay with your variation. Pull the shoulder blades down. Keep sending the shoulder head to the ground and keep 
opening the chest for three, two, and one. Pull the belly in and very slowly, just as slowly as you went before, come down. Very slowly, even though it wasn't that big a movement this time, it, um, it needs to benefit from the same time for you to come out. And now we'll go to the other side. Remember, the left arm is out first in a straight line, palm down. Pull the right shoulder blades down, but keep the internal rotation of the arm. Bring the right fingers to the ground and shift your weight so that you turn to face the right. Keep the shoulder blades coming down the ground, relax your head. And again, see if you want to take one foot to the ground or both. Doesn't matter what you did on the other side. This is a new side. Maybe it will be more open, maybe it will not be as open. And breathe. For three. If you want to take the hand back, just keep the internal rotation, taking the shoulder heads to the ground, shifting all the weight to the right. And one, keep the belly engaged. Remember to come out of this ever so slowly. It's very crucial for recovery for later on. If you take your time to come out of poses, then you won't really be as stiff later. You will still be stiff, especially if you're not used to this, but because you took your time, you will not be as stiff. Bend your elbow, 90 degrees, cactus arm. Pull the shoulder blades down, but keep the shoulder head of the left shoulder going to the ground. Gaze the right and move around. Four, three. Pull the shoulder blades down. Two. And one. See if you want to go deeper or not. Four, three. Two. And one. Good job. Slowly come down. Half drop. Come to sphinx pose. Pull the lower belly in. There's no rush. When you get here, you want to have the elbows under the shoulders. You want to find that internal rotation of the shoulders, which means that the shoulders want to kiss. And then you pull the shoulders back, keeping that internal rotation. Relax the head, pull the shoulder blades down and reach the chin forward and up. Now this is a very important uh, piece of work because this is what you want in your bow pose. You want to really pull the shoulder blades down the back and reach the chin forward and up. Otherwise, you'll be doing your bow and your head will be sticking out forward which is what I often do. So I have to keep reminding myself to find internal rotation of the shoulders, to pull the shoulders back, and to push the chest forward, read the chin up, and keep raising the feet down, activate the glutes. Good. Relax the head, bring the left hand in, the left elbow stays under the left shoulder. Pull the shoulders back and the shoulder legs down, and bend the right knee. Okay, so here, um, start with the legs, um, with the feet hip, uh, well, shoulder width apart, more of a mat width apart. So feet are quite far away, mat width apart. Keep the knees where they are, and then bend the right foot. From here, place the right hand to the ground, find internal rotation of the shoulders and pull them back, pick up the chest and the cheek, and then grab the foot. From here, we'll start working with the grip, but we're not flipping the grip yet. So you want to pull the foot towards the outer side of the glute, 
and you want to think of the elbow moving up. If you can, you turn the palm around and you press the foot down. Remember to keep the lower belly in, open up the chest, pull the shoulders back, and then you can shift the chin just slightly up to lengthen the neck. Four, three. Four, two. And one. Very slowly, start shifting the elbow back and down. And release. Okay. So now you can use um, your strap or your piece of towel or clothes. Um, you want to basically have the, the foot with that piece of uh, material that you have so that you lengthen your leg this way. And we'll go again and we'll try to flip the grip. So we want to bring the heel in. And from here, we want to bring the elbow out. You want to keep thinking of internal rotation of the shoulder as much as you can, and then to move the elbow out with the elbow, with the shoulder turning in, shoulder turning in, shoulder turning in, and then you move around. So I'll show it from the side. Okay. So from here, you're holding on to what you're holding on to. You start with the arm in internal rotation. So my shoulder is coming down and pulling the shoulder back. And then from here, keeping that rotation, you start bringing the elbow in, in, keeping that rotation, in, 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 keeping that rotation and out. And this is the flip. And then you can kick up and feel it. Now, once your arm is around, then you can start to widen the shoulder blade and reach away. Four, three. Two. To come out, you go very slowly. You come down. You start, you keep the shoulder close to the neck. Keep that shoulder head facing your chin, facing your chin. Keep the elbow coming down, elbow going back and around. Okay, so maybe this didn't happen. It's fine. I just want to explain the whole movement, the range of movement. Now, in order to do it without the help, what you, what, what's happened? There's two ways. One way is to have your palm all the way forward and then open up and then take it around and then you grab the foot all the way with this external rotation what you don't want is to really like let go of the shoulder so your shoulder still even though it's in external rotation it pulls forward towards the cheek and then you start bringing the elbow in grabbing the foot from the inside you turn the elbow in and you reach up. Okay, I'll show it one more time. At very slow movements, keeping the elbow close to the chin, the shoulder close to the chin. So the palm is out, I'm turning the palm up, so it's external rotation, but then I pull the shoulder in, shoulder into the shoulder um, socket. Then you grab the foot all the way around. This is the first variation, I'll show another one. And then you bring the elbow in, keeping the shoulder close, to your uh, chin and you start coming in. Maybe you'll stay here today and you breathe, pulling the shoulder blades down, opening the chest. Maybe you go all the way around and you shift that, keeping the belly. If you want to come out, you go slowly, you don't let go, keep the shoulder in, the elbow in, pull the belly in, keep the elbow close to the body, go around and when you feel safe, when you feel that it's out, it's still not out, keep it engaged, and then let go. The second way to, to flip the grip, you can grab the big toe with the thumb and the index finger. So I'm grabbing the big toe with the thumb and the index finger. My arm is in internal rotation and I pull the shoulder close to the uh, chin again. 
Then from here, I start to bring the elbow down, keeping the internal rotation as much as possible, just to keep the shoulder close to the shoulder socket, so there's no surprises. Keeping the elbow close to the body, and I start shifting, shifting, shifting. And then from here, I keep grabbing the big toe with the thumb and the index finger. I grab the, I'm grabbing the out, uh, inner foot, and I start going around and lifting up and reaching up keeping the shoulder in. Once I'm there, I can widen the shoulder blade and elevate the scapula. Four, three, two, and one. Then I very slowly lower the elbow, elbow close to the body, elbow close to the body, elbow close to the body, shoulder close to the body, and I go back and I don't let go, never not even when the arm stretches. I pull the shoulder blades down, I feel that the shoulder is safe, and then I let go. No sudden movements. Left side, this side might be easier. And then we'll do it with both sides. Exciting. So it's from a uh, sphinx pose. Again, press the hands down, press the feet down, activate your glutes, open up the chest, inner internal rotation of the shoulders, pull the shoulders back, pick up the chest, the chin, and exhale, chest and chin higher, pull shoulder blades down, shoulder blades together, press the feet down, activate the glutes, inhale, and exhale, ribs in and up, shoulder blades in and down, inner shoulder blades forward, lower inner shoulder blades forward, and then slowly relax, bring the right hand in, bend the left leg. Remember that the legs at first are quite open, the feet are with, uh, mat width apart, pull the belly in, ribs in and forward. And then from here, we start without flipping the grip. Just grab the foot, keep the internal rotation of the shoulder, of the arm, and bring the foot closer. Maybe you can bring the elbow up, press the foot down for three. Two. One. Keep pressing the foot down, pull the belly in, keep the glutes active, and slowly start bringing the elbow in and letting go, but don't let go until you're out of it. Keep the engagements. Good. Again, use your towel, use your uh, strap. One side might be different, so don't um, risk it unless you really know what your body um, can do today. Okay, so we, I just want to hack, hack my, my foot with a piece of cloth. Okay, I'll turn around. Now from here, pull the belly in, I pull the shoulders back, I pull the shoulder blades down. What I want to do is to keep the internal rotation of the shoulder and pull the shoulder back. With time, you don't need to be that specific with this, but especially if you're not used to it, then this is a, a good uh, way to stay safe. So think of the shoulder head moving to the ground and towards your uh, chest, and then pull the shoulder back to keep that rotation. And then from there, what we're doing is we're bringing the elbow close to the body, keeping the glutes active, the body active. We, we start moving the elbow, alongside the body, and we lift the grip in this way. Keep the internal rotation, internal rotation, until you feel that you found your range, and then you can start widening the shoulder blade, externally rotating the arm, and straightening up. Pull the shoulder blades down, and reach the head up. And then to come out, very slow movements, keep the elbow coming in, pull the belly in, shoulder blades down, keep the shoulder close to the body, the elbow close to the body, start shifting the elbow back and around, slow movements, very specific movements. Okay, so you can repeat with the strap or you can try without the strap. So imagine that I'm holding a strap if you're doing it with the strap, otherwise without the strap. You want to go all the way around and grab the foot. If you're doing the variation without the strap, then you're turning the palm up and towards the foot. 
go towards to this deep um, rotation. Now from here, we want to find that internal rotation and the elbow in, and then we keep the elbow coming close. So the shoulder will externally rotate. We just want to think of internal rotation for safety reasons, so that we don't overdo it at all. We want to keep the elbow close to the body, keep the elbow close to the body, stay where you need to stay. Pull the shoulder blades down. Once you find your range, maybe experiment with widening the shoulder blades and reaching up. Pick up the chin, the chest, take a breath, keep widening and elevating. And when you're ready, start bringing the elbow in, pull the shoulder blades down, elbow in towards the body, shoulder in towards the body, and slowly move the elbow close to the body to go back. Okay, last variation. Now this time, you grab the big toe with internal rotation. Grab the big toe, hack the inner side of the foot, bring the elbow in. Pull the elbow in, keep the internal rotation as much as you can, elbow in and reach, go slowly, stay where you need to stay, if you're all the way up, reach up, pull the shoulder blades down and straighten, four, three, two, and one, very slowly, count. Full bow, okay. So for full bow, you can again use um, the, the strap or the cloth. You will go with your feet, with your hands behind the, with, your, with the clothes, without the, with, behind the feet. I can't talk anymore. Internal rotation. You bring the hips uh, in and then you reach up through the feet, up just the feet. You keep the elbows in, internal rotation of the elbows and you start bringing the elbows in. I keep my elbows in internal rotation, I keep the elbows coming in, and then I flip and I reach. I'll show it from the side also. Then you come down, keeping the elbows in, keeping the legs up until the very last moment, shoulders in internal rotation, keeping the elbows close, 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 then turn around very slowly, and then come down. Okay, I'm coming to the side. So my uh, strap or whatever I'm using is behind the feet, feeding. And then from here, arms are in internal rotation. So my shoulders want to kiss one another, and then I pull the shoulders up. I grab onto the strap, I pull the belly in, and then from here, I start with the legs. I activate the legs. And then from there, I start to uh, bring the elbows towards the body. So I turn the palms out, I keep the shoulders in, elbows in, and then I move the elbows along the body, and then maybe I go all the way up, or maybe I get stuck somewhere, and I breathe. If I go all the way up, I widen the shoulder blades, I elevate, and I straighten up, I can gaze up, four, three, two, and one, and then I keep the elbows close to the body, as I move the elbows back and I go around very, very careful. Okay, last one. You can repeat with the strap or without a strap. I'll turn around so you see this angle too. Okay, so knees can be hip distance apart. You can start with the feet together. Whatever worked best for you before. So if turning the palms like this worked, then you can go all the way back, maybe start with one foot, go up, grab it, and then pull the belly in, and then reach for the other foot, and grab it, and then reach up. If um, grabbing the big toe works better, then you can grab the big toe, keep the internal rotation of the shoulder, grab the big toe, keep the internal rotation of the shoulder, pull the belly in, uh, reach up, and then keeping internal rotation, start bringing the elbows in, close to the body, shoulders close to the body, elbows forward, and up. And then elbows in, and slowly come down. Okay, so now your turn, or keep doing what you're doing. 
I'll do it one more time from the front. This time I'll grab the feet at the same time. So pulling the belly, open up the chest, and then go back. You can grab the big toes, lift up, keep the elbows in, shoulders in internal rotation, and then start bringing the elbows forward and reach up. That's amazing. Keep the glutes active, pull the lower belly in, start reaching up, start the chin reaching forward and up. Four, three, two, and one. Elbows in, and slowly, very slowly, move with the shoulders to come back. Child's pose, good job. Okay. We can do some shoulder rotations. And some dynamic reach. So come to sit on your heels in a kneeling position. Left arm in a fist. Pull the shoulders back, arms in internal rotation. Palm, let right palm uh, in a karate chop, external rotation. And then from there, in external rotation, come up, come to your nose and start rotating internally and go back. Keep your shoulder blade down and then come back and up and start externally rotating when you find your limit and go along the midline and go forward two more times. Midline in external rotation, and then start turning the palm forward and out, and go back in internal rotation. And then go back, really push the right shoulder blade in to take advantage of the full range of motion, and go out. Last one. And then the other side. So when you're done, right arm in a fist, left arm out, karate chop. Pull the shoulders back, the shoulder blades down. Bring the arm up in an external rotation along the midline. Go around, internal rotate, press the left shoulder blade towards the right, keep the left arm straight, go back, palm faces up. And then press the left shoulder blade to the right, start rotating through the shoulder and go out, up along, along the midline. Two more. Keep the shoulder blades down and kissing. Keep the whole body active, last one. When you're done, dynamic bridge. Take your time if you need to do some more rotations. Otherwise, lie down. This time the feet are at normal uh, distance of reach. So the fingertips can caress the back of the heels. Press the feet down, pull the belly in, bring the hips up, and then bring the hips down. And then we'll add the arms. Inhale the hips up and the arms up, chest to the chin, knees away, and exhale, arms by your sides, hips down, pull the belly in. Synchronize the movement, inhale. Inhale deeply and at the top of the inhale, the chest is to the chin, the hands are on the ground, the hips are up, and exhale. Go slowly, follow your exhale at the end of the exhale, the hips and the hands are down. Two more. And last one. Keep the knees moving away, lengthen the back. When you're done, hug your knees. Bring the knees really close, lengthen your lower back. Inhale here. And exhale, bring your forehead to your knees. Roll from side to side. And then find stillness, pull the lower belly down, send the six points away, inhale into the lower back. 
and exhale through the mouth. Bring the knees closer to the chest, the hips further away from the chest. Pull the shoulder blades down the back. Inhale. And exhale through the mouth. Good. Inhale here slowly. Start coming down with the head. And exhale, bring your legs down. Any variation you'd like for Shavasana. You can take a deep breath. And then exhale through the mouth, completely let go, glitch up. Allow your body to rest completely. Bring your awareness to your shoulders, to your shoulder blades. And imagine like you're Breathing into them, breathing more comfort into them, and exhaling out any stiffness, any discomfort, any sense of violation. Inhale more comfort, more love into your shoulders and shoulder blades. And exhale, allow gravity to hack your whole body, your lower back, your middle back, your upper back, shoulders. In the next few moments, lie here in complete stillness. Allow your whole body to recover. Relax. And here. Gently. Start bringing your awareness back to your body. Back to your breath. Sure. 
going legs. Nice, relax, and do release. Meditate to your back, lower, middle, and upper back. We'll meet in a seated position with our chest wide open, with our shoulders pulled back, our belly pulled up, and the back of our head reaching up to the heavens. We'll bring our hands to the chest and inhale deeply into the chest. Exhale through the mouth. Inhale into the chest and exhale through the nose. Thank you for your work, your hard work. The light in me on our sense celebrates the light in you. Namaste.